Warning, this video may contain spoilers for late parts in the game. If you plan on playing this at some point, turn back now. You have been warned. CR with the review of a Gun Grave for the PS2. This is going to be a pretty short review as this game is honestly pretty bare bones on content, though what it has going for it is pretty damn solid. Also I'd like to add that I'm not going to include an extra section because it's pretty minimal, though if you play the game it is worth it to take a look, but some require you to play perfectly on the hardest difficulty, and I'm just not good enough for that. So without any further ado, let's get to the basics. So in this game you play as the character Grave, as you gun down many people through a couple different ways. Obviously there's the gun in which you shoot from, which there are two ways to do that, somehow. Essentially there's a kind of lock-on function, which is one way, and the other is to kind of just shoot without aiming. This still auto-hits people, weirdly enough, but it's just kind of different and hard to explain. Then there's a melee attack you can do with a giant coffin Grave carries, which he keeps his gun in. You also have a couple different special attacks that you get throughout the game, being four of them, although there's technically only two to me. You have a missile launcher and a spinning around and shooting. The other two are just better versions of these. The way you use the special moves is by doing combos and filling a meter, which gives you one use of a move, but can be stacked. The health meter is the most interesting thing to me, as at first, I didn't understand why I wasn't taking damage, but essentially you have a shield that when it goes down you start taking damage, but the shield itself heals pretty quickly. There's also three forms of movement with walking, running, and jumping, which also doubles as the dodge button. The jumping isn't really all that helpful, except for some bosses who do shockwave attacks. The dodging is obviously really helpful as you can dodge forward, backward, and side to side while still being able to shoot, which comes in handy especially on the boss side of things. The story starts with a girl who is clearly injured, shambling into a doctor's office with a large case. Two men are inside the office. One of the men opens up the case and takes out a gun with the doctor commenting that he never thought the man would use them again. The girl awakens and she mentions the doctor's name is Tokiaka and that she was tasked by her mother to give the guns to a man named Grave. The doctor says the man who is with him is Grave and the girl says that he'll stop the syndicate and stop Harry McDowell. Grave goes to a club owned by Harry McDowell and murders everyone. Through dialogue, you learn that the girl's name is Mika and that Grave is an old friend of her mother's. Dr. T tells Grave about a place with sea junkies and he goes to kill them all. Through more dialogue, you learn that Mika's father is a person named Big Daddy who worked in the syndicate. Dr. T says that the city has become quiet in the wake of Grave and that there is an informant who wants to give the location of Harry. Grave meets the man who tells him that they'll all be in the syndicate airship and Grave rewards the man by, uh, killing him. <laughs> when Grave finally reaches the airship, he meets the five leaders of the syndicate with McDowell being the top dog. They mention that the last they heard was that Grave had died and had once been in the syndicate himself. One of them named Bob gets particularly pissed off that Grave would dare fight back and decides to fight him. Grave finishes him off fairly easily and jumps outside to see a helicopter leaving. Bob then comes back and Grave finishes him off for good. Back at the base, Mika mentions that she and her mother were escaping, they were attacked by strange white figures, and Dr. T doubles down by saying that there had been rumors of these figures with inhuman power. Later, Grave is put in a machine where the doctor says that all the blood in his body must be changed periodically, saying he exchanged his soul for the body he has. Just then the doctor gets murdered while Mika is taken, and with his dying words he tells Grave this, and mentions his true name, Brandon. He goes through a subway until he eventually meets up with Ballad Bird Lee, who throws Mika off a train, which crashes immediately after. Grave then fights a mutated Lee, executing him swiftly. Mika appears back at the base, saying she was rescued by a man, who told her to tell Grave that he would beat him at the tower. 
Wave reaches the top, meeting Bear Walken, who starts the fight pretty immediately, now having six arms. He changes again during the fight into a giant monster, which Grave takes down. An explosion happens and a tower begins to collapse with a man appearing as a grave, before Grave falls in front of a cathedral. He enters and encounters the man, Bunji, who had been Grave's disciple. He is shortly put out of his misery with no transformation. Grave then goes up an elevator and has a flashback of his old life. As Brandon, who was friends with Harry as they climbed their way to the top of the syndicate, Brandon had also been friends with the syndicate leader, Big Daddy, who just wanted peace after everything so he could live with his wife Maria and their unborn daughter. Maria's only wish to Brandon was to protect her daughter. After some time, Harry reveals that he wants to begin a coup with Brandon to kill Big Daddy and become the leaders of the syndicate, which Brandon refuses. Harry then brutally kills Brandon by shooting him out of the elevator they were in. Grave gets above the city and meets up with Harry, who reveals that he hadn't actually killed Big Daddy, but mutated him into a creature. Grave kills his former boss and friend, but not before the boss is eaten by another creature who Grave also eliminates. Finally, Grave comes face to face with Harry and shoots him, toppling the syndicate with one final bullet. A while later, Grave and Mika drive off, seemingly hopeful for the future. Honestly, the soundtrack really pulls through for the game, and I was really surprised by how much it jams. The cutscenes for this game are pretty dang great as well. The characters interest me as well, and I'm hopeful from what I've heard about the sequel, which I'll definitely be playing and reviewing soon. While the game plays well, it's extremely bare bones like I was saying, especially for a PS2 game. It's most comparative to the first Devil May Cry in length and the rating system used, but with a lot less gameplay options and as far as I played, no need for any exploration because the game plays exclusively linearly, as there isn't really any extras to discover except by beating the game multiple times and getting higher scores, which I'm not really that great at getting high scores in these types of games. If you want to kill two hours or so, I'd say play the game, and if you like it and want a full deep dive into the series, there's an anime that goes a bit more in depth with the characters, and I think it's a prequel of sorts. There's also a couple of sequels, a VR title, and apparently they've been in the process of making a new game called Gore since 2019 or so, and I'll most likely get that once it comes out as well, so there's at least a good bit to uncover if you're looking for something like that. Hope you enjoyed, and see you next video.